Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. Today we're going to talk about Bellatro, and you might have heard about this game. It is a roguelike deck builder that is inspired by poker. And this game released both on PC and Nintendo Switch back in February, and it's gotten really popular. In fact, last month alone, it was the second most played game on the Steam Deck. It even beat out Helldivers 2, Baldur's Gate 3, and Elden Ring. And I gotta admit, I've been playing it a lot. In fact, I've kind of lost a lot of productivity over the past week as I've got spun up with this game. Well, in keeping with that theme, I'm going to show you how to port this game over to other handheld devices, including Android-based ones like the Retroid Pocket 4 and the Odin 2. In fact, any Android-based handheld will be able to play this game no problem. And you can even put it on your Android phone. It has full touchscreen controls. And finally, as an added bonus, I'll show you how to install it on your favorite Linux-based retro handheld as well. Anyway, if you've never heard of this game before, or you want to play it on your favorite device, now's the time to jump in. And so without any further delay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first things first, in order to make this port, you will need to own a copy of Bellatro on PC already. And you can find it on Steam for about $15, and I recommend also installing it on your computer at the same time because we will need those installation files. We're going to start by making our own Android app, and this will require you to use a Windows PC. So our first step is going to be to go to this GitHub page called Bellatro APK Maker. On the right, you'll see a link that says Releases. Click on that and then download the most recent release that you have available. And the file itself will be in an .exe format and you can save it wherever you would like. Once you have the file downloaded, click on it and it might give you some sort of Windows protected your PC warning. If you get this, just click on More Info and then select Run Anyway. And this will open up a command prompt that'll ask you a few questions. The first questions are going to ask whether or not you want it to delete the temporary files it creates as part of this process. I like to select yes here. It'll also ask whether or not you want to run it in verbose mode, which means that you'll see all the text happening as it's going through. Again, for this one, I like to click yes. After that, it's going to check to see whether or not you have Java installed on your computer. If it doesn't, it's going to ask, do you want to download and install it? And I imagine you know exactly what to do right here. We're going to hit, yeah, man, I want to do it. Next, it's going to download Java. This might take a couple minutes. And then after that, it's going to install Java. Again, just wait a minute or two. Now, for me personally, the first time I ran it, it said that it had an error. It didn't detect Java. What I did here is I just pressed any key to exit and then opened up the app again. From there, I just typed in yes for all the previous questions, and then it did detect Java, and so it started the installation process. Now next, it's going to ask you a few different patch questions. The first one is whether or not you want to apply an FPS cap. If you choose not to apply this, it means it's going to run at the native resolution of your display. For me personally, I'm just going to hit yes and then cap it to 60 frames per second. It's all going to really be up to you. Next, it's going to ask you whether or not you want to apply a landscape orientation patch to make sure that the app runs in landscape every time. And again, for this, I do recommend choosing yes. Next, it's going to ask whether or not you want to disable the CRT shader. I like CRT shaders, so I'm going to click no. And then finally, the last question is whether or not you want to make these saves more accessible. For this, I do click yes. Now, after that, everything is going to be automated. It's actually going to find the installation from Steam directly on your PC, grab that file, and then turn it into an APK. Note that if you don't have a Steam installation of this file, all you have to do is put the Bellatro exe file in the same folder as this script file. Anyway, this will take a minute to run through the process. Once it's done, it'll say success and press any key to exit. Now, if we go back to the folder where we had that first exe file, you will see a Bellatro APK file. And this is the app that we can now install on any Android device. So let's start with the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. I've already put this in my downloads folder. So all I have to do now is tap on the APK. And then you might get a couple of prompts here to adjust your permission settings. So I'm going to go through and do that. Then after that, it'll ask whether or not I want to install it. We're going to click, yeah, man, I want to do it. And after a minute, the game will now be installed. So if we go back to our home screen, you can see the app right here, Bellacho. It even has the little Joker guy face. And honestly, that's really about it when it comes to setting up Bellatro on an Android device. It is a super simple process. Now, one thing of note, the text in general in this game is a little bit on the small side. So I would not recommend putting this on a super small device. I personally like to play it on my Odin 2, which has a six inch screen. I've also found that the built-in controls for all these retro handhelds work perfectly with this game as well. But the great thing is you don't need to have a controller connected at all. So if you want to put this on your Android phone, this will also work perfectly. This game has full touchscreen capabilities, just a matter of tapping on the cards, then, you know, playing your hand, discarding, all the things that you do in this game. 
Of note, when playing with a controller, you will often see a context menu. If you want to bring that up, you can also do that with a touchscreen. You just need to press and hold wherever it is you want to see that menu. So yeah, I found this game to work equally good with retro handhelds and with phones. Now before we move on to the next part of the tutorial, let's talk a little bit about what this game is all about. Like I mentioned, it is a poker-inspired, roguelike deck building game. And let's break down each of these. The first is that it is a poker-inspired game. What this means is that you'll be given a hand of different cards, and then the mechanics are kind of similar to poker in that you can choose up to five cards to play, or you can also discard cards so that you can get others. And the goal here is to rack up a certain score. You can see on the top left there is a number, we're trying to reach that. And you have a number of hands and discards that you can play before your round ends. Now the roguelike element is that these rounds will just keep going and going, and they get harder and harder as you go. And if you die, it's not a big deal, it just means that you will start all over from the beginning, but starting from scratch. And the further that you progress in the game, you will get more and more perks added to your runs as you start them. And so that's the roguelike element, in that this is based on repetition, and it will get easier the more and more you play it. And finally, this is a deck building game. There are all sorts of variables that you can use to increase your score. The main one is called Jokers, and you can build up to five of these to play at once. And these will give you different perks depending on the hand that you're playing and the cards that you're playing as well. So for example, there might be a perk that gives you additional points if you play a straight or a full house, or you can even just get perks for maybe playing some diamond cards or face cards, things like that. And the addicting thing about this game is as you start stacking up all those perks, it can create some really wild combinations that will give you a ton of money and score. And the great thing is, is that they kind of keep you in the dark until you play your hands. You never really know how many points you're going to score because it doesn't tell you ahead of time. And so it ends up being very exciting if you play a hand that you don't don't think it's going to earn a lot of points, and then it does, and it actually boosts you to the next round. And there are some excellent quality of life elements to this game as well. For example, you can actually just close it mid-game, it'll remember where you were. All you have to do is just go back into the menu and it'll create an autosave, and this works both on the PC and Android version as well. Anyway, that's a quick summary of the game itself in case you've never played it, and I found it to be a very addicting game, probably one of the most that I've played in a while. Now finally, let's say you don't have a handheld PC like the Steam Deck to play on, and maybe you don't want to play it on your Android phone or Android device. Well, you're also in luck because you can play this on Linux-based devices that are running specific custom firmwares. The tool for this is called Portmaster. I featured this in other videos before, and I'm also long overdue in making a full dedicated video for this too. But essentially, this is a service made by the community that allows you to install Linux-based PC games directly onto your handhelds. And this works on a number of different custom firmwares, including Amber Alec, Arc OS, Jealous or Rocknix, as well as the Retro Arena and Unofficial OS. So chances are you might already have a retro handheld that's capable of running Portmaster. And as of making this video, there are 423 port games available on this service. Some of these are freeware games that you can install directly onto your device through Portmaster, while others will require to have the PC game files. And as you can imagine, because Bellatro is a commercial game, this is one of those that does require those PC files. Either way, if you want to read more about Portmaster or the specific installation instructions for Bellatro itself, I'll leave all this stuff linked in the video description as well. And it's a very simple process, it's very drag and drop. In fact, let me show you how to do that right now. We're going to use the Palkitty RGB30 as our example. This one is using one of those custom firmwares that we were talking about earlier. It's using Rocknix, but others will work as well. Here I'm going to go into the Tools section, and there's already a Portmaster script. Of note, you will need to be connected to the internet with your device for this to work. Anyway, once you get it started, go down to the All Ports section, and here you will see that exact same list of all those games that you can play. Just scroll down until you find Bellatro, then press the A button, and this page will describe the game and then also the installation process. We're going to press A again to install the shell files, it'll only take a minute, it's only like 3 megabytes. And after it's done, we are good to go. We can press B a couple times to get back to the main menu, then select Exit. And then once we're back in our main OS menu, we can shut down the device and then remove our ROMs SD card. Now take that micro SD card and put it into your Windows or Mac computer, wherever you've installed the Bellatro game. And on the micro SD card, navigate to the ROMs folder and then scroll down until you find the Ports folder. Once you open that up, you should see a folder that says Bellatro. Open that one up. Now all we need to do is put the Bellatro game file into this folder. Again, we're going to do this on a Windows PC, but all you have to do is open up Steam, find your Bellatro install, and then right click on the game and select Manage, then Browse Local Files. 
This will bring up a Windows computer that will show the exe file that we need. From there, it's as simple as just dragging and dropping the bolatro.exe file into that folder. And that's it, we can now eject our SD card and then put it back into our handheld. Once we have that fired up, we're going to go into the ports folder, navigate down to Bellatro, and then press the A button to start it up. It'll take a minute the very first time to get it running, but after that, you will be right into the game. And the cool thing about this port is that it will scale the screen to match the resolution and aspect ratio of the device that you're playing it on. So for example, the RGB30 has a 720x720 720 resolution and a 1x1 aspect ratio. And that means this game is going to play at a square aspect ratio, but it looks awesome here. However, there are two caveats worth noting with these Linux ports. The first one is that most of these devices do not have a touch screen. And unfortunately, if you want to skip through the tutorial, it does require you to tap on the screen. And because of that lack of touch controls, that means you will have to go through the tutorial even if you want to skip it. The other thing I noticed with the RGB30 is that the discard and play buttons were swapped compared to the PC counterpart. And so as a result, it did take a minute for me to rewire my brain to push the right button at the right time. Now in the settings, there's actually an option to change out the discard and play buttons. And I did try this out, but unfortunately that made it so that neither of the buttons worked. Even when I tried to change it back to the original configuration, the buttons no longer functioned. So this might be something that has to be updated in the port itself, and it is very early in this whole porting process. But all the same, I did want to note those bugs in case you run into them yourself. Either way, that's really about it for this video. I wanted to show you how to play this game on various different handhelds or even your Android phone if you want. So if you already own the PC version of this game, it's kind of like getting a free version of the game in all the other places that you want to play them. For me personally, I do prefer playing it on Steam just because it has cloud saves as well as achievements, but there's no denying the fact that having this thing on your favorite retro handheld or Android phone is really going to help you pass the time as well. I just really hope it doesn't ruin your productivity like it has for me and a couple of my other friends. As always, thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.